Hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing, and I am joined today by Smiddo from the Boxing Asylum at the Library Jazz Club in Sheffield, which uh, Dennis has just took over <laughs> uh, by up by crook. <laughs> They're sat over there, the two rowdy. Smiddo's come down to see me. He drinks water. He likes the food, though, don't you? And he goes, Smiddo, to old friends and new friends, right? Uh, what do you think about boxing at the moment? Well, as you know, Paul Kett, I've gone way off it, to yeah, be honest with you. Yeah, I know, you. mate, I know. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I've been on a little bit of a journey, really, <laughs> since, since your channel has, has gone live, what, we're talking a couple of years. Yeah. And I've been on a bit of a journey with boxing, and I'm, I'm, I'm more than halfway out the door, to be honest with you. I've turned into the full casual, I'm casual corner on the Boxing Asylum podcast. Um, so, say three years ago, I was a Box Nation subscriber, every week on the podcast, yeah. used to write a blog for Tommy Allen's website, yeah. um, I used to subscribe to Boxing Monthly, used to get up in the middle of the night to watch all sorts of fights, I've been to New York to watch fights, I've been to Germany, London multiple times, yeah. and that's all gone out the window, because, yeah. and I think it's all been ruined by, by pay-per-view to be honest, yeah. um, I don't mind pay-per-view per se, but the, yeah. as you have spoke about, yeah. the, um, the, the criteria for pay-per-views is that bad now that from, I'm just not interested, I don't care. And the amount of times someone like you will say, oh, did you watch that fight? And I just say no, because I don't watch them. And that's that's where I am at the moment. Well, I watched the big stuff. I played for, uh, I went off with my mate and watched Lomachenko the other week. Enjoyed that, very much enjoyed that. But I've gone full casual. Yeah. yeah uh, what did you think to Lomachenko coming over from, obviously, other end of Europe where he's from, uh, to fight Luke Campbell? Did you think that were a good fight? Did you think it were thrown under a bus with Luke? What do you think? I didn't have a problem with the matchmaking, to be honest. Um, I had a problem with Crawler. Crawler, yeah, 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 yeah. I know why it happened, mandatories and all this, and same for Luke, um, but I can't do anything about the mandatories. But I had a problem with Crawler because it was a mismatch. I didn't think that Luke Campbell was a mismatch. Lomachenko was clearly a strong favourite and would be every day of the week, don't get me wrong, um, but I don't think it was a mismatch and I really enjoyed the fight. I think Luke Campbell um, put in his best performance ever of his career, but yet still lost 11, 11 rounds and that just shows us how good Lomachenko is. But I think we've, we've been quite lucky with in British boxing recently with the amount of pay-per-view stars that have competed in this country. Lomachenko, Usyk, Inoue, Crawford, Golovkin. Wilder, Golovkin, you know, that's fantastic. And it was quite refreshing really to see the amount of um, support, that Campbell got some good support, and Lomachenko, you know, they turned up at the weigh-in and there was lots of people in the arena to see Lomachenko. There was none of this, because normally we get a lot of the shite about, oh, you should support your own and you, know, you should support the Brit. I don't agree with supporting a Brit just for the sake of it because he's a Brit. But I thought it was really balanced with Campbell and Lomachenko. And like I say, I've really, I really quite enjoyed the fight. Um, and Lomachenko, really, at the moment, is one of the only fighters that I would A, pay pay-per-view for, or half of pay-per-view, and B, get up in the middle of the night for. Lomachenko, um, Canelo, Crawford, stuff like that. I've gone full casual. I mean, you're talking to a man here, Paul Kett, who once got up in the middle of the night to watch um, Shumanov against Hopkins at three in the morning on Box Nation. Me, and I did that. I watched that live. So anyone who wants to... So I am a casual now, but I didn't fucking used to be a casual. I you were full people. on hardcore, weren't I you like Andy I'm a... Patterson, yeah, Tommy, yeah. <laughs> Brian King, uh, Ozzy, yeah. booked, Steve Welling, I once, booked, them, I once booked a half day off work so I could get home to watch Box Nation, the Russian card, where Kudry Ashoff got beat by Jura Dollar. I once booked half day off so I could watch the Japanese card, Yamanaka. So I've done some proper hardcore things along the way, but I've just I've just fell out with the game. I've just fell out with the game, and it does grind you down, Porky. Not, oh. as, as you you know you've been on the more the business side than me, oh. but it, do, it grinds you down, and that's that's where I am with it. And and to be honest, and a lot of stuff people will, people who know me will know that um, horse racing's took over my world or all my hobbies, if you like. Um, and I've got no I've got no worries in admitting that that I would I spend a lot more time on horse racing than I do boxing. Yeah. Uh, boxing for me at the moment is 
I'm not going to say he's dying because I'll always love it, but I don't. I'm worried that Eddie Hearn's going down this path with this KSI thing that could open doors for an Emmerdale Farm star to fight an EastEnders star. Yeah. And is he going to promote that and give them a, a, give them a, a, a boxing license? Because he can't promote a white collar. Because we were going to put one on and they said you can't. You've got only, you've got, if you've got a laminate, a, a, a promoter's license, you've got to put on professional fights. So Eddie's just putting it on with Billy Joe as undercard, isn't it? And Devin Haney, but I don't agree with it. And I'm worried that it's going to, that's going to be the norm now. Yeah. Um, I would be worried if it if it did turn out like that, and I think you've, that's a fair point you've made. Uh, but on the flip side of that, I kind of do agree with with Fast Car a little bit because he can't ignore it. No, he can't. The no, numbers no. that they did, I mean, fucking hell, I don't know who they. Well, did. they come into boxing these other numbers though, ten percent. I don't know, of them. but you've got to try it. Yeah? And even if they don't, they cream a load of money. I mean, people say about you know Billy Joe's going to be on the undercard to to basically a novice fight. But just think about it. Forget who's at, top, who's at the top of the bill and who's not. B Billy Joe Saunders is going to fight at the Staples Centre. He's going to be sold out and he's going to fight. For five million quid. He's going to get paid a load of money. Five he's million. going to fight in front of millions and millions of fans. And so what if there's a little novice fight that, you know, above them on the card? I mean, look, it's not my kind of party. Yeah, yeah. I will not be, be watching that or paying for that. Billy Joe's no never way. had that money in his life. Exactly. So. So, you know, I don't know. Rosado is fighting, and he gave Rosado. Oh, is he really? Oh. Yeah. But he's been beat up more times than fucking God knows. They were in Creed, though, weren't they? Eddie Earnrod knows this morning going on about it. Rosado was. So, Rosado was one of the main, list, one of the main fighters one that he's going to pick off a list. And somebody said, oh, he's, he's, he's not. Had, he's not won a title, he's not done now. He's been and Eddie said, oh, he's been in Creed. Didn't he fight Martin Murray or something? Yeah, he fought Martin Liverpool. Murray yeah. in a life and death. Yeah, I remember, yeah. So oh, Billy Joe will put him in his top yeah. pocket. I mean, don't it? get me started on Billy Joe Saunders, but... Uh, you know. I don't know. Well, he's, he's Billy Joe's talented, isn't he? No, but yeah. no, nobody's saying he can't fight, and nobody's saying that he probably isn't the best middleweight in the world because he probably is on his day, isn't well, he? Well, he could be, but he needs to prove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs but he's going to gonna go with Eddie, and Eddie will keep him busy because that's his playbook 101. Whenever Eddie gets a fighter from Frank or from you know from if, if he gets Mikey Garcia or whatever, he, he just keeps it. He just gets him busy. He did it with Danny Jacobs. Yeah, yeah. He's done it with um, who's that middle? The other middleweight he's got, Andrade. Andrade yeah. didn't fight uh, hardly ever. He beat Billy in amateurs, didn't comes, he? Comes to Eddie Earn fights, you know, three times in a year. That's the kind of thing. Don't quote happens. me on that. But I think he beat Saunders in amateurs, didn't possibly, he? Andrade? Yeah, yeah, possibly. Yeah, possibly. What do you think about tomorrow's fight between Tyson Fury and Otto Wally? Oh, I don't give a shit. No, Wally. I don't care. I don't. Care. You don't care. So Tyson Fury. Let's do, let's get it right now. So it was what December twenty seventeen. When did uh, December twenty eighteen? He fought Wilder. Right, yeah. so ten months ago, ten months ago, he'd been in the wilderness, Fury, in the in the eyes of the British public, he'd been yeah. in the wilderness, and then he come back with this, and he had a great story. Whether me and you agree we're with all the looking story, forward to 2019, absolutely. absolutely. Won't we? So he had the palm, he had the, the world in the palm of his hands. He'd just been in a, a, a wildly entertaining fight with Deontay Wilder, regardless of a win lose. And he's draw. in shape now. He was in great shape. He had a good story. Whether you and I agree with yeah, the story, yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's yeah, a different yeah. subject. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he had a great story. It was all over the papers in the UK, you know, and it was refreshing to see someone that wasn't Anthony Joshua getting some coverage. And then what's he done? He's gone and fought two blokes this year that me, as a former hardcore boxing fan and still a casual, no. I didn't even know who they were. Tom Schwartz no. and Otto Wallin. I'm telling you now, Porker, if you'd have t given me 50 guesses as to what Otto Wallin, what country is from, or any of his wins, or how old he is, or what colour fucking hair he's got, I wouldn't he? know any of them. He's a Swede, isn't he? So what? So turn it. So Tyson Fury is fighting two blokes from who, Germany who and never Sweden and America, and I've never heard of them. What chance have I got? Because I'm known as the boxing fan when I go to work and stuff like that, or in the gym, and they say, "Who the fuck is this Otto Wallin?" Do you feel embarrassed? I don't feel. I don't really care. But it yeah. is. It is embarrassing. I see. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You, you could probably knock Otto Wallin out. You. You're looking oh, in good nick. I'm in good shape. Yeah, I could. In good nick, this kid. Hey, like as, I've I've always always said, as I've always said, I throw a better right hand than Dillian White. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got well, no right hand, Liam White. I'll throw a better right hand. But he's got a fantastic him. left hook. He has got a good he's left hook, yeah. Mark we'll Tibbs has taught him how to throw that left hook. <laughs> yeah, we'll give him that, yeah, we'll give him that. But, right, moving on from Tyson Fury and KSI Logan Paul, 
Yeah, shocking. Francis Warren hammered him yesterday, didn't he, about that, didn't he? I didn't see it. Francis Warren, you are a legend for hammering uh, that journalist for asking you questions about KSI Logan Paul rematch. Or KSI Logan Paul 2. Right, moving on. Gillian White's B sample, Smido. Do you know what it is? No. No. Um, Did you know it takes six weeks to go to Australia on QE2? And we're how many weeks are we since it happened? Eight. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> um, Have they gone there and they forgot it and they're coming back for it? Where's it where's oh, this God. B sample? Well I don't know, oh, it, it, it really I'm no expert on the old drug situation. There's other people out there that know a lot more than me. Andy Patterson's one of them, he knows it in and out. Andy Patterson I'm knows about well, everything, yeah. doesn't he? I'm at the stage. He's hardcore. I'm at the stage, and I was before this Dillian White incident. I don't care. Just let them all fucking do it. Yeah. They're all fucking at it. Look at the top that top ten you did the week of every week. Six. six of them. Six of the ten. Six of the top ten. Failed drugs test. Um, eight of the top twenty. It's shocking. It, 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 it's shocking. Um, I mean, I forgot what I said at the time on the asylum something along the lines of um, yeah it, it looks it looks to me like they've had an, an adverse a sample they've managed to bullshit them and bombard them with evidence yeah. from Varda to UCAD or the British Boxing Board of Control bombard them with evidence get some sort of delay in or you know, we'll sort this out after the fight. They've tried to keep it bush hush. They've been caught out. They got caught out whispering at the press conference. They've been caught out by that American journalist. Um, and now, what the most interesting thing for me is now, Edward seems to have. Edward, Eduardo. He seems to have wiped his hands of it, Russ. Because when they asked him I in saw the interview, interview now, he says, Oh, well, his team are dealing with it. Dillian and his team are dealing with it. Jocked him like a stone, on it? it uh, that's what it appears to me. Right. Now, what do I know? He's going to have to have been a fucking daft individual to have been in this position with the WBC for 580 days and then do something daft on his samples. But, I don't know. This and end of the day, right, Eddie Hearn, he put pressure on Robert Smith and Charlie Giles to get that fight over the line and said, look, if you pull the plug on this fight, you and you can there's going to be a hell to pay because we need that B sample testing. So I think they've panicked, let them fight, and then they're going to deal with a mess. But Eddie's, he's, he's not to do it, he's only the promoter. But he's got he's already been paid from the show, hasn't he? Yeah. So he's been paid, Sky have been paid, Dillian White's been paid, and it looks to me like Dillian White has been just pushed away. I mean, the guy who, who's his brother or into his brother or whoever he is, he's just done an interview. Dean, whatever your second name is, thank you for coming out on the interview on Seconds Out and saying uh, it's up to you what name you're calling yourself. And Dean Saunders. Dean Saunders. He used to play for Forest, didn't he? Yeah, and Derby. Yeah. Well done, but it looks to me that, and he's making his own way in boxing, so good luck to him, but it looks to me that Dillian White's been pushed away now, doesn't it? His second time drug thing. Yeah, and twice. let's hope that he isn't, and let's hope he sorts it out, but I feel for him at the moment. Another person that we've just been on about today, and we're on about in our office, and I know you don't like talking about this, Dave Allen. He's, we'll, go through, we'll go through the Dave Allen story. He fought Bracamante and he said on the end of the ring apron, I didn't train. He did. For the fight. And that's why, and I've got to do got better. So Barry Hearn said, pull, so pull him off the Christmas show yeah, did, yeah. as punishment. But they let him back into the fold. He beat Webb, did he? Webb? Yeah, and Brown? Left. Yeah. Yeah. And it looked like he were on his way, and he was saying he was saying he were two fights away from Joshua. Joshua yeah. So he fights Price, and then he's thinking Price Povetkin, pay per view Joshua. He loses every round against Price. Dan and Barker pulls I never him watched out. That fight, yeah. yeah. He then comes out after the fight and says, "I have had bad headaches 18 months of being in bad health, and I'm done." I've, I've, he, had, he puts these glasses on. Yeah. I don't know what all that's about. Then the Eddie says, I want your October 19th, the glasses are gone, he's got 20-20 vision, <laughs> and he's back. But no, he again. puts a tweet out and says he's going to blow his head off, his brains out, and, it's, and he's pulled off show now. And then he's put something else out, he's saying he's retiring the Rhino, 
the rhino's tired, he's going back to being David. What, where does he go now? Is it chronic trauma injury, brain? Well, Dennis said he don't know if he, he, he'd work with him because there could be legal cases. Yeah. Will he get a license? Promoters are saying they don't want to work with him. What, where does he go now? Does Eddie work with him again? Is he done in boxing now? People are saying he's done. Well, 27 think, year old. I think that Eddie, Has he been used? Yeah. I think. It's not helped himself. I mean, he went to France, which was not to do with Eddie and got He was on our show. He was on our show. He was going to be on yours. Got yeah, pulled June, off, and then and he they fought a few weeks later um, in France. He got well. He, we pulled him off because he didn't sell a ticket in Newcastle. He didn't sell a ticket. So how can you pay for an opponent and pay for yourself? Yeah, yeah. If you sold seven tickets at forty quid, how can you pay for your? Uh, it's not going to pay your train fare, is it? It's difficult because he's obviously quite um, vulnerable. He's a nice kid, but he's vulnerable, and we think he's been took advantage. He turned pro. With us. Yeah. He had seven fights undefeated and Dennis let him go because he won't train. But he had ability. The only, the only problem I have with Dave Allen is that a lot of the time he's saying things after the event. He's saying he's had headaches yeah. for 18 months. He said Leading he's not up to it, stronger, yeah, faster, yeah. quicker than yeah, a speeding yeah, yeah, bullet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after the event, it's, he's being clever. After people have been taken for a ride, the fans or Eddie's paid him or what, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know. Obviously, there's been some bad decisions made by various people within that situation, including Dave Allen. I mean, who's managing Dave Allen? Who's, well, we don't know. It, it won't make Mars, but example. I've been told it's his, he makes all decisions. But Which I, is a big problem. I know, That's yeah. a big problem. I said to him, I said to him, listen, uh, Dave. You need to reinvent yourself now, and you need to go train with somebody like Adam Booth or Tony Sims. He went to Adam Booth, it didn't, didn't work out, it. did it? Two days. <laughs> so then he's got, I don't know if he went to Tony Sims, he ended up with Barker, who was married into one at Maxwell. Yeah, I don't get that. Is he married know. Barry and secretary or PA? He's, or he's well in. He's well in. Yeah, put it that way. Now, Barker trained Lee Purdy for one fight, or he did corner through Towling, didn't he? He's throat Towling with Dave, but Barker's now saying he's not, he doesn't want to be a coach. I don't think sometimes world champion fighters can be a coach because they, Clinton Woods couldn't do it because he sees things in people. He had Liam Cameron, but he couldn't do it because he wants them to train like he would. World champions are gym rats. Could you imagine Frotch training somebody? What would Frotch be saying to Dave well, Allen? would probably be beating him in the runs. Yeah, he'd be beating him in the runs. He'd be saying, well, well, why are you not up? You see what I mean? McCracken can do that. Well, he don't even do runs with him, but he wasn't a world champion. Yeah. He was barely British level. Yeah, yeah. And it shows that the trainers like that who are not world class who end up good trainers. How many world, world class world class fighters do we see end up trainers? Just tell me one. Peter Fury had one fight. <coughs> Yeah, I think Jamie Moore's making a good go of Jamie it. Jamie Moore didn't win a world title, he didn't fight for one, but he won everything else, didn't he? But British Commonwealth European, and he should have fought for a world title. It's difficult he? because they'll be seeing things that they could do when they were training, but Ryan the people Rhodes. they're training can't do. Ryan Rhodes, uh, British Commonwealth European, fought in wrong weight category for years, is, yeah. but should have been a world champion at light middle, would have been a pound for pound if he'd have had timing and, and, and right fights, but he hadn't had a breakout fighter yet, has he? But he could fight, couldn't he? And he's probably the one of the highest decorated fighters at the moment. He's training. Robin Reed doesn't train fighters, he does pad seminars. Top elite fighters don't take kids all the way, do they? I don't think. I'm just trying to think now. I yeah. can't think of any, can you? You get that with football Joe Fraser well. couldn't do not with his son, could he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, with Freddie Roach, how good was he? As a he was a world champion, Freddie Roach, wasn't he, for one fight, I think. But he, then he got injured. Well, he got injured, didn't he? Yeah, so I don't know, but... Where does Dave Allen go from here now? Has he got brain injury? Is the summer? Well, the honest answer from me is, Porky, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the honest answer from me. Do you feel that Dave Allen is like a KSI Logan Paul kind of a, a, a side effect? You know, like a, a an afterthought kind of thing, a, a gimmick. I think he's obviously tried too hard on to social make himself, media yeah, to make himself. To make himself like. Do you think he's, he's gone, probably tried too hard? He's put that much out there. He's come back to bite yeah, it. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah. And maybe. do you think? Maybe he realises that, and that's why he's cancelled his Twitter. He'll be back. He'll be, he'll be back. You get 30 days to come back on Twitter, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he's, yeah, he's probably gone too far for his own good. Telling him he's everything lost. about he's lost. his life. His, his yeah. identity's lost, inside and outside the ring. Because he keeps changing trainer, you know, don't know. Reinventing himself, yeah, he's gone too he's far. Took, but he's, like you say, Paul, he's 27 years old, he's younger than me. He's took a hell of a lot of punishment. Well, listen to this, right? From numerous fights. 
We've got Cash Alley right at the moment. He's trained by Richard Towers, and you've just heard Dennis over there. He's, he's got no miles on. Clock Cash Alley has he 15 and 1, age 27. Him and Dave at the same age. Dave's 17 and 5 with two draws. Look at the miles on the clock. Yeah, yeah. Dennis says, look, Cash Alley's got to start again. We've got it's a slow process over five, six years. Dave Allen's just been, I'll take that fight, I'll take that fight, I'll take that fight, I'll take that fight, I'll take that fight. Louis Ortiz, did he win a round? No. Oh, uh, seven rounds. Uh, Yoka, did he win a round? Gillian White, ten rounds, did he win a round? One or maybe one. Two. One round. I heard him sharing two rounds. Uh, Price, did he win a round? Not seen it because right. it was on pay per view. <laughs> so that's 10, 20, 37 rounds there. Massive punches, all of them. Gillian White, massive puncher. Ortiz, very accurate. Didn't throw a lot, but what he threw, he hit. So you've got 37 times three minutes there, the punishment. Some punishment of Ortiz. That Yoka. No, Yoka. Oh, Yoka. I watched that on a stream on my phone the last few rounds. He was getting hammered all around the ring, man. Racamante. He took punishment in that, Can't didn't he? I remember it? that one, then. He's 27 year old just, and he's got miles on clock. Yeah. Tommy Fury's had two fights as a boxer. He's a millionaire now, after we're from what we've heard today. Tommy Fury. He's got uh, some hundred and odd thousand pound deal for calendars. Has he, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> good old Tommy. There was an interview with him and that girl, wasn't there? Some blonde, blonde, that blonde yeah, Molly yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. Good luck I've to him, I say, yeah, yeah. but... Because boxing's an horrible game, isn't it? You know what I mean? But yeah. I feel for David in a way, but there's other ways that I think to myself, well, yeah, I'm a bit the same. everybody else could see what we're happening except you, because they're all patting him on back, one day, yeah, go on Dave, fight him, and everybody when he was coming out to, I went to one of his fights, right, and everybody were laughing, going, oh, it's Dave Allen now, he was like it was all a bit of a joke, a bit of a comedy, yeah. yeah, a bit of a comedy, he must rub boxers up the wrong way as well, because there'll be a lot of boxers that train harder than, obviously, a, a lot harder than him, are more dedicated than him, yeah. and getting very, very much less opportunity. I think, you know, because Eddie will come on and say, oh, he does good numbers on social and interaction. But Theresa May does, is she going to be a boxer? Well, which is, it, it, you know, in 2019 it is an argument whether we like it or not. People who do good numbers, but it's gone too far. It's, yeah. The numbers the numbers might be up there, but the talent is down here. He's achieved yeah. Napo, really. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's achieved Napo, but anyway, next subject, Porky, I don't yeah, like Yeah, that's all right. Uh, moving on from that, right, what do you think? About Anthony Joshua in Saudi. <coughs> I want him to win. Um, obviously, we spent a lot of time talking about Joshua He's over the years, one, yeah, yeah. as we all do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'd, I'd like him to win. I think he's been... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say good for, for UK boxing because he was meant to be good for UK boxing yeah. because remember when he came on board we're going to take the money from pay-per-views Porker, and we're going to reinvest it on Saturday night well yeah. our friend Dale Nichols will tell us that that reinvestment has not happened in terms of world title fights on Sky on normal Sky Sports um, I don't know um, I, I, um, I like Joshua as a fighter um, I, think he's, I think he's done well he's in entertaining fights he's been well, he's been well matched he's been lucky along the way um, I don't think he's a great fighter. Um, oh, and I, Joshua. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think he's. Also, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't think he's a great fighter. Um, he's, de he's definitely not the best heavyweight. I mean, even before, even before Ruiz, Eddie was telling us, and he meant it. It wasn't even a matter of opinion. He was talking as if it was fact that Joshua is the best heavyweight in the world. No. Where, where have you got that from? Where have you got that from? But no, I, I would, I would mind Joshua to um, Joshua to win the rematch. To be honest, um, the first fight again, another fight I didn't watch live. I have watched it since. Um, yeah, I just thought it was a an easy an easy win for him. Woke, Andy woke Ruiz. Up in, yeah, woke Andy up. Ruiz. I thought it was an easy win for Joshua. I woke up in you the morning. You did what I did, five a.m. job, didn't you? Yeah, I woke, up yeah, in, yeah. I woke up in the morning and my phone was going off. But no, I didn't, I, I didn't watch it live. Didn't, didn't pay for the pay per view. I mean, I, I probably won't pay for the pay per view again this time because no. the undercard's going to be shy. But no, um, I want him to win. I've got note against him as a, as a fella, really. Um, I think he's done well. He's got a lot of pressure on him, man. He's a young lad. He he's not thirty of, till October. He's he got a lot of home. pressure, Porky. But I think he's 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 embraced and encouraged some of, a lot of some, it, yeah, if not yeah, all yeah, of yeah, the yeah, pressure. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, I think it was a remarkable achievement to win a gold medal with so little experience. Yeah. There can't be many in the history of Olympics that's won a, won a, uh, a gold medal having so few fights. Yeah. Compared to the likes of Lomachenko, he's hardly had any fights, Joshua. And ex I mean, when did he start boxing? When he was 18. I mean, I, I was boxing at a younger age than Anthony Joshua. Well, Phoenix. Yeah. yeah. But like, so, 
So, um, but the, the one thing, the, so I don't mind him as a person. Um, I don't. I think he's an entertaining fighter because he's vulnerable and he scored quite a few knockouts. Um, and the one thing I hate, absolutely hate, is all the bullshit that goes around it. So, and that's not necessarily comes out of his mouth, but from Sky and Eddie Earn. But he's been thrust into a position that he was the he was the king, and the king in May, whenever it was in America, was dethroned. Um, I hope he wins the rematch. I don't really care if it's in Saudi Arabia or not. Oh, just, yeah. just tell us. They, they've, they've kind of off admitted it. They're never going to come. I don't on. think it's going to happen, me personally. I don't. Do you? I do, to be honest. Yeah. But they're never going to come on and say, "Well, you know, poor kid, they, they offered us a load of money, so we took it." They have kind of. Yeah, what Dennis said. He thinks it's a cash out. I mean, in case Joshua backs in. Well. Someone made, a, playing it safe, eh? someone made a very good point on talk sport and there's not many good points on boxing on talk sport. Yeah, because it's sky on, isn't it? But um so I can't take credit for this, but someone said they would rather it, they would rather Joshua lose in Saudi than lose in the UK because if he sells out eighty thousand at the, in Cardiff again and loses, where does he go from there? Yeah. But if he loses in if he loses in Saudi, don't get me wrong, it's still bad. It's still bad. If he loses in Saudi, they can I think he'll just do a tour then we are a belt and say, well we don't need belts, it's not about belts. They'll invent a belt like Muhammad Ali trophy because I know, but we've where heard go, today, though? right, that if Joshua loses there could be a Muhammad Ali tournament with heavyweights and no belts. If Ruiz don't want to come into the tournament, or oh, Wilder, Wilder yeah. Eddie's going to do a Muhammad Ali tournament. Dillian White we, Yeah, we did we, we Scala Sourland, because he's got the concept, hasn't he? <coughs> MTK will be involved, Cala, Eddie, and it's going to be like a tournament. Yeah. This is what we need. I don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. If Joshua loses, it, yeah. they're going to break away and do a tournament. Now, I said that a year ago on my thing, that we could see that happening. And now it's looking closer because Eddie will say, it ain't about the belts, we're not paying no sanctioning fees, we've got the Muhammad Ali trophy. It's and just a narrative, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, a yeah, narrative. Yeah, like, so Eddie's been out there before Ruiz telling us that AJ's the best heavyweight in the world. He is Better not, than Ali. He, he is not and has never been the best heavyweight on the planet. Shannon at any, Briggs would have beat him at his peak. At any one point, um, he beat Klitschko in a great fight. 42 great, year great old, fight. Really. But Fury had already broken him ment mentally. Bro, no. Fury scored it was, him. It was a great Great fight. It really was a great fight. I watched that in a in a um, in the reception you in a went Florida to, hotel. You went to I Hamburg, though, didn't you? So I went, Fury, I went Fury to Fury Vladimir, didn't you? Uh, for uh, Hey, hey, sorry, hey, hey, oh, hey, buddy, yeah, 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 yeah. So that was a few years ago. Togate. Yeah, Hashtag Togate. Yeah, yeah, Togate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so, the, hey, the best thing about that card, what was the, um, Terry, uh, Terry someone on the undercard, an English fella, cruiserweight, got absolutely leveled. Oh, Terry, Terry uh, what's his name? Not you know, Dunstan. Terry, Terry, not Terry Dunstan. Uh, uh, oh. Dale Nichols, all that. Dale Nichols, that was everything. Terry he was Watson, an Andy Patterson, didn't he? he was there. Terry, uh, Terry, whatever his name was, got absolutely Dale. flattened on the undercard. But yeah, that was uh, that was good. But no, I hope Joshua wins. Um, and I think that you know that now they've lost the O. I think they're more likely to fight the likes of Wilder. Eddie will just want to wheel him out now and work him get, to death, won't it? Joshua Wilder's a great fight, I think. I think he'll get scored by Fury. If yeah, Fury's yeah. in the if Fury's oh, in the mood, I think Fury will box rings around Joshua. And if, unless he's not in the John McDermott mode, the first one. No, yeah. He lost that one. I remember that. Ten rounder won it. Yeah, I remember that. Who is it? He had an artist sack, didn't he? Frank Maloney outside at ring, didn't he? After the result. No, no, that was the prize fight. Because oh, I was, that was against Thompson. Because I was there. Oh, that really? night. Oh. I was there. Thompson against um, Price. I don't know if it was one or two. That's when yeah. Kelly had a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelly. Yeah, 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 that's when. Yeah, that's when. Dennis yeah. tells a good story about Frank Maloney. Uh, I'm not going to say it on him. <laughs> <laughs> they were business partners, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> You were spinner watching that bird over there with Bob there. Ah, uh, yeah. You're yeah. married, but, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I am. I am very happily married. Yeah. Good luck, yeah. though, can't yeah. we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Porky, Porky's been putting the work in all night. Yeah. But, uh, but other than that, is everything all right in your life? You happy? Yeah, uh, we're going to the races tomorrow. Are you going to be contributing on the Boxing Asylum this weekend? Uh, probably not, because I won't be watching any boxing this weekend. No, you're not watching Fury Well in, no? No, I won't be watching that shit. No. Um, I think Devin Haney's on this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, so I've set that on record. You dip in and out now with Boxing Asylum, don't you? And, uh, yeah. and I think that's good for the Asylum. Because, yeah, yeah, I think the, the Asylum's, the Boxing Asylum podcast is way better than me now. 
better. It's yeah. way better. It's way better. Yeah. And credit to the lads because there's a lot of hard work. All I listen to now, right? I listen to Boxing Asylum. Two seconds. Boxing Asylum. New Age Pod. I feel boxing. And obviously, I have to listen to my own and check for swear words or Nicola does. But so, so everything's all right. Then, yeah, right? yeah, good. We're racing tomorrow at Doncaster. Been there ledger. Today. Yeah, that's why I'm in my tie. Look, it looks like we're doing an interview, Paul. We're not used to seeing you in a shirt. We've got me. I've worked in. Walked I'll in with a shirt. And tie. Jules got it free. Yeah. Yeah, I've had a, I've had a uh, meat and potato pie with you and Dan. And you like it? Yeah, oh dear. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I would recommend it. Um, right. And I'll probably be here this time next year when I'm back in Donny. Brilliant. Well, listen. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming on. Keep on trucking, all your boxing fans. Keep supporting boxing. The voice of hardcore the boxing. The voice of hardcore boxing. Keep on trucking. Shout out to Climber Core, Nicola. Peace out.